My name is Elizabeth Jackson. I'm the president of the Brunswick Community History Group. This is our speaker, Dr. Jeff Cobb. Uh, before we start, um, I'd just like to acknowledge that we're on the traditional lands of the Wurundjeri Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation. Uh, the lands have never been ceded and still belong to them. Uh, I'd like to uh, pay my respects to their elders, past and present, um, and acknowledge the wonderful work that the Indigenous people did over many, many centuries to keep all the lands on which we're meeting. So here we are. It's hard to believe that it's been 30 years <laughs> since um, Jeff and I were here launching the mural in uh, 1992. <laughs> um, we were very thrilled to see the new Brunswick Library opening at last. Um, this has been a, a long and convoluted process lasting about 10 years where uh, the site for the new library was discussed and decided to go up again and, and people changed their minds. It went on and on and on. Um, finally, um, it was realised that it was, this was a good site for it. Um, the recommendation from the consultant, and one which I agreed was, with, was to pull down the hall and build a new purpose-built library. However, there were um, elements in the community who didn't want the project to go ahead at all. And they um, discovered a new found love and heritage. Um, they got the building nominated for classification, and so we were forced to keep it. Um, I still think that a new library would be a much more functional library, but that's just me as a librarian talking. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so we, had, we um, were left with this constraint. We were very fortunate in having an excellent project manager, a guy called Noel McGuinness, and he kept saying, We've got to make this into a really special library. And he, he kept introducing special features. One of these was the lift in the what's now the Coonahan Gallery building. That was the council offices originally. And it's a specially sort of heritage style lift, uh, which I thought was wonderful until I got stuck in it with two other people <laughs> at a time when the whole council was in lockdown. <laughs> and that was a very t tense half hour till the fire brigade came and let us out. Anyway, uh, the, another. Um, special feature which Norm insisted on was um, commissioning a mural to cover what had been the um, stage at the town hall. So we were enthusiastic about that. Noel managed to rip, wrangle the budget um, so that there was money to pay for the mural. Then we had to select our muralist. And there was never a lot of doubt actually because we had one of Melbourne's preeminent public artists and muralists living right here in Brunswick. <laughs> and he's here now. <laughs> Still lives here in Brunswick. So, um, Jeff's um, given me some information about it, which I'll read out. <laughs> Dr. Jeff Hogg was an early contributor to the development of contemporary art in public space. An artist and creator, he was founding the Foundation Director of CAST, RMIT, Centre for Art, Society and Transformation, and Program Director, Master of Arts, Art in Public Space. So that's Jeff. Uh, just a bit more about the mural. Um, when the library was first reopened, there were sort of sails in the middle, so you couldn't really see the mural very well. Um, a few years ago, the library was shut for quite a long time while they um, did some um, structural work and renovations. Uh, when it reopened, the sails had gone, and I was working here at the time, and a number of people came in and said, oh, what a great mural, is that new? <laughs> it had been there 20 years at that stage. <laughs> so it's really nice that we can see it better now. So Jeff's now going to talk about it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much, Elizabeth. Just turn this on. Let's see if it. Uh, how's that? Is that working? <laughs> Good. Um, well, I actually had a bit of a run up to um, doing this mural because in 1979 I developed another mural project at Tirana Youth Training Centre. And that was a two year project and it was. It was a mural, it was also an oral history project that uh, Sue Slayman from the ABC did and uh, a, uh, oral, um, and also a song cycle was being developed by Tassus Ionidas with the object of it being performed by the Ford Factory Choir and the name of the project was um, Brunswick Images. <laughs> <laughs> so, that, so I had quite a, I, I didn't live in Brunswick then. I moved to Brunswick in 1983, so, um, so that was my introduction to it. And it was also interesting because I met a lot of the people at that stage that would become important for the development of this project, which sort of 
slow down and really. And I wrote their names, some of their names down so that I wouldn't forget because the whole notion uh, that I really see as a continuing sort of process was to work with uh, people who lived in the area and could really uh, talk about their own experiences, their particular uh, way of understanding being in them, and then working with that to produce the drawings that became murals. So some of those people were, of course, the Barnes's. I mean, Les Barnes, I imagine that people remember Les Barnes. Yeah. Most many people. Yeah, a very, very interesting man that went through the Depression, um, explained to me that during the 1930s ballroom dancing was a huge craze in Brunswick. And um, of course going for the, for the pictures, but for many Brunswick picture theatres that then existed. Um, so there was Liz Barnes, of course there was also Olive York and Loretta, uh, also people who I imagine are known. And, um, and, uh, and the real estate agent, John Lazaro. And I noticed that the Lazaro and Alston sign was still around up in sort of COVID. It used to be across the road there. But, um, so those were some of the people that helped inform that whole continuing process of from one mural project to another. And, uh, and then sort of with that, I was going to say that the mural sat in some context. And Elizabeth explained the library and how it was uh, created as a part of the vision for the library. But it was also uh, a, a, a really, a, I think, what could you call it, really a beginning of an interest in art and public space sort of beyond here. So there were a series of other works that were developed around about the same time as the mural that in some ways were associated with it. So I might just show a couple of um, a, a couple of uh, uh, images. So this is. Um, these are a series of banners that were uh, designed by Karen Casey. And Karen uh, died last year. Uh, she was a very um, active Indigenous artist. And with the development of the mural here, I was also asked through the council to commission a series of other works. And uh, Karen was the first artist involved in that, and so these were for the um, for the, um, uh, the town hall. But also, she created a series of banners for the entry to Brunswick, and they were displayed there for many, many years. I did try to push the local thing a bit further, and I approached what was then called the College of the Textile, the uh, College of Textiles, which is now. RMIT fashion textiles to see if they might produce the banners that Karen had designed. Unfortunately, it didn't happen. So, you know, now I understand everybody is much more connected. But that's the next lot of banners that can all be integrated into the new arts precinct, art and design precinct. But uh, that, that was one series of, of works that was created at that time. Uh, the, uh, and you can see it there. And then there was also the sculpture in front of the Mechanics Institute. And that was, uh, that, that was created by Simon Perry. And Simon had just arrived in Australia at that time. He comes from the UK. And he married an Australian uh, woman who lived in Brunswick, and so he then became a local resident. And so as a part of the process, it was a public advertisement, a series of people applied for him to um, create a work, and, uh, and Simon 
uh, looking very young, 30 years ago, uh, produced, produced that. Um, and it, of course, was a reference to Noel Coonahan. And the whole sort of area had that focus starting to emerge because the Phoenix Street events in 1932 seemed so significant and they were so particular to the Brunswick that I'd been really discovering through knowing the Barnsers and you know the stories that um, Les Barnes and of course Bernie also would, would tell and so I suggested the, uh, that there be some recognition of Phoenix Street and that was accepted by the, the council and funded through the Sydney Road. There was a development program around Sydney Road at that time that that, that was created. And we also suggested that the, with the then curator of the Brunswick Art Gallery, we suggested that that should be called the Coonahan Gallery. And, uh, and so, it, so it became. So there were a whole series of things floating around. And so I also painted Noel up the top there in the heavenly position. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, he's, uh, he's got the pride of place. But there are also other references in the work to uh, the very important uh, part of Brunswick played in terms of working class history in, in Victorian Australia including uh, not just the free speech demonstrations, but also the eviction campaigns and so on. So that was, uh, that, that was there, and it was a part of the overall thinking for the work. So the work, so I tried to connect the work to a curatorial idea around, around this, this, this particular part of Brunswick. And there was one other piece as well, and that was uh, created by Chris Ball, and it's the brick chimney that's now um, interestingly built into the Je Jealous Craig Real Estate Agency, <laughs> just down the road, which is a sort of reference to the workers in the brickwork. So there was that, there was the, uh, the Noel Cunningham Monument, the mural, uh, were all, and of course the naming of the gallery, were all a part of trying to keep that very particular history uh, notable in Brunswick. And it was, I think, and it was important then, and I think it's still important, because the sort of vision of Australian art history that Noel was a part of is not as well documented as other aspects of Australian art history. Um, thinking of the groups around the angry, angry penguins and so on, which are, are, are well documented and, and not always accurately. The art historian Bernard Smith uh, wrote, um, he visited here while I was working on this, and he, he uh, wrote a biography of Noel Cunahan and, and, um, uh, and really made reference to that fact that the, that, uh, the way that he had been not, not fully recognised was, um, was was a critical thing. So he was happy to see see the uh, see, see, see the image there. But he wasn't entirely happy with the mural. And Bernard had been a great help in developing mural projects and works that I created over the years. Particularly a large piece down at at the, um, what was then called the museum station, now Melbourne Central. A very, very big piece that I, I worked out with, uh, with uh, Trades Hall in 1984. And he, he liked that and came down and visited it often. And, uh, but when he looked at this, he said, oh no. Um, he, he, you know, he was gentle in the way he described it. He said, there's too much in it. There's nowhere to rest the eye. <laughs> so then Barbara said to me, I'd like to be able to find lots of things in it. I thought, well, okay, not everybody agrees with that. <laughs> but of course, in the tradition of, of mural painting, 
you know, there are some areas that are more active than others, and it's a sort of part of the way you experience it. And uh, in this, under the influence of 1980s, straight 90s postmodernism, I steered away from that and I just filled up the, the surface and I filled it up all within the one plane, which was another, <laughs> another thing that not everybody approved of. So everything's acting there within the one, one picture plane. And the, the thing that I, I, I put forward for the project, as well as that aspect of, of working class history and Brunswick's important part in it, well, was the thing that I, I really um, experienced when I first moved to Brunswick, and that was the very diverse community, the, the strong character that the um, migration experience that's brought to the area. And so that became the, really the, the, the foundation for it within the context of the, the, um, uh, the uh, significant working class events. So those two things together. And that's how I gathered the images. So some of the images came from uh, just imagination. Others uh, I took from some historical references. That's an actual, uh, based on a, 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 a photograph of um, Noel. Uh, the figure in the, um, uh, on the uh, side in the red dress is an invention, largely. Um, so uh, it, it was sort of created as that sort of, sort of amalgamation of things that, uh, that I was able to find. And also, uh, in the corner, there's a stamp that a local Chinese artist uh, did for me, which was very, very good of him, and the calligraphy. So he sort of wrote a poem. Now, I'm trying to remember what the poem was. And I can't quite remember. <laughs> but, um, but uh, somebody maybe will. Um, the Chinese people come into the library and read it. They do. And they're very appreciative. Is that right? Yeah. Great. It's not like the tattoos that people have that they think says something significant. It says something very good. They're cleaning, so I know. Right. Okay, good. I'm glad of that. Because, yeah, I was able to, um, uh, I was able to um, uh, fund uh, uh, his his help in it. Unfortunately, a lot of the names of people who've been involved in projects are a little bit lost to me, and I, I was trying to find his name, and I, I couldn't find it. Um, he did all that in a, in a day, so he was just here for a, less, than, less than eight hours. Made of uh, also, I have noticed that on the, um, uh, the uh, uh, brick column uh, that the reference to the brickworks that the, the artist's name I couldn't see the artist's name there there was a small plaque that didn't mention the artist's name and I, I'm not sure if uh, Simon's name is on the I think it is but it's hard to find is it? yeah, yeah. of course these things are all always done exactly right now there's a sort of formula to it if you like but back in at the beginning of the 90s it was all being worked out you know does that whole thing was just starting starting up again. Whereas, of course, now art in public space is a, a pretty regular part of local government's interests and activities. Then the old Brunswick Council was leading the way. And it was really Brunswick and the City of Melbourne uh, who was the main, uh, most active. And also, actually, there was also um, in uh, one of the outer suburbs, I've just forgotten, but there are only, only a handful of suburbs and, and local government areas that were really active around art in public space at, at that time. So all these works that were collected together were a part of the beginning of something that's become very, um, very much a part of the local government activity now. So I thought perhaps we might handle this more as a discussion than, um, than me just talking forever because uh, I, I think uh, I don't want to say too much myself about the imagery. It sort of breaks the spell. So perhaps uh, if, 
if anyone would like to ask questions or um, make any comments, uh, we, we can have a, a discussion about the project. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's interesting because you know you make a point that when when a, it, it's really good to work with the designers of the building. You know, if you're doing these sorts of works. The earlier you can work with the building designers, with the architects, the better. And you, you know, the same applies when renovations or changes are, are being done. So it, it, that's sort of like the you know acknowledgments of the artists. That's one of these things that's now a sort of a recognised standard that hasn't always been. So you know, it's a it's an ongoing story. <laughs> you know, to you know to get. To, to get all that sort of working. I am uh, uh, an art uh, historian, and in contrast to Bernard, I see a lot of uh, things that are holding us together. And the movements go up and spread out, but cross things coming through here. And here and I get to read in there. And I also the, the figures that uh, relate. I feel very, very good for life because they're rather romantic. Um, let's just a few comments. Well, thank you very much because. Um because I did work with some of the, you sort of you've stirred up some, <laughs> some memories. You, um, I did actually work with the books in the collection to try to make those sorts of references so it would have some sort of a meaning within the library itself. So, yeah, so if, well, that was a part of it, yeah. Um, I can only see posh up at the <laughs> people in there. Oh, well, Sylvie. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to find the working class references, no. but you're not going to tell us. No, no. You're I'll... not going to give away any secrets <laughs> about what any of these, except the old Kuhnen. I'll, I'll leave that to you, Sylvie. Oh, no. But um, you can my ask neighbors, me. You my can... name is Stephanie. Yeah. Oh, did find you? Out <laughs> what it was about? You, you, you can you can ask me any particulars, please. Not to talk to that person on I, I did steer away okay, from that. What, what are the yellow dots, just to start with? The yellow dots? Well, the yellow dots are really the idea of a sort of a screen. So it's, it's saying this is not a reality. This is something that we're looking through. This is something that's constructed. So it's like a screen in front of the, in, in front of the work. And it was a device that I, I was using at that time, and it really, it really grew out of an interest in the way that um, that Brecht looked at theatre, that it's to be understood as a construction. So what I was trying to do with the painting was uh, presented in that way, so that it could be seen as a as something that I I'd constructed. It wasn't an absolute. It's a it's a story. It's it's something that somebody else might add to. That uh, is partial. Is um, it's not a complete thing. Yeah. My, my question was to be about the idea of the adaptation. You look at the uh, at the mural from. The moment. I mean, I know you just noticed the yellow dots, so I wonder whether you put them on first or last. Last. <laughs> <laughs> the last. Actually, I got pretty uh, pretty good at doing the yellow dots. I did quite a few during the 19... from about 1985 to about 1995. Ah yes, that's the uh, the calligrapher's signature. Yeah. Hi, I'm uh, actually um, I'm, uh, local from the 
in the home. So they come here often. And I didn't notice that the mural had been here for ages and ages. And I thought it was amusing too. But when I first came, when I came in here some years ago, and I was really sort of gobsmacked by it. And, and they're so, I thought this is a fabulous library, and I wish you would come to a And I was fascinated with it, and being um, from a um, first generation um, Australian to migrant parents coming in from World War II, I pondered me <laughs> a moment trying to, what I focused on was. Okay, um, we are the migrants, and the mix. And I know, because I'm a 60s child, um, that we had a lot of Italians and Greeks um, along Sydney Road. So I was looking for Greek and Italian, maybe mythological symbols, maybe, <laughs> because I couldn't see them there in the faces. Um, and I didn't know much about the history of those Greeks. So I just read, you know, came in the little um, the newspaper articles. So I now see that the the, the 19 was it the 1930s, you say, or 20s, where they had uh, they didn't have didn't have freedom of speech, oh, and yes. the guy was in the the the, the, uh, the guy so he wouldn't be arrested was in a cage, and he and he um, had his feet dead in, in order not to. Um, arrested, so I'm guessing that's that megaphone thing up the top. Uh, yes, yes. <laughs> and I'm really curious, so looking at the megaphone, I'm really curious about those little black, what they look like soldiers, and I can see the, um, the, the gun, so I'm guessing that's a reference to the World War. Well, well there, there was actually one of the, uh, during the eviction campaigns, there was a uh, one of the demonstrators was shot in Sydney Road. Yeah, he wasn't killed; he was shot in the leg. Um, yeah. So. But what I also just going back when I first came here, um, the speeches that you gave, I had no context. Context. So we were talking about things that I didn't know about, meaning I, I didn't know the history of the Brunswick Council and 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 the reference of that knoll. Um, so, Okay. Okay. Um, so I was a bit lost, but now I'm getting there. <laughs> what are the years about? What are the years? Oh, what are the years about again? <laughs> I, I, I think it's about our senses and about how we experience things, you know, about, you know, how we're living in a place. It's not about it's Brunswick being noisy, is it? <laughs> it can be. <laughs> Certainly be comfortable. Hi, there is a foot that is sticking out um, just at the top right, and I'm wondering what that's all about. Uh, like, that, that was the guy that was shot in the leg. <laughs> That makes sense. <laughs> well, while we're guessing, <laughs> while we're guessing, may I guess that the road might be to do with what used to be across the road? Across the road, it's made up yeah. Mm -hmm. Of course, um, you know, like, th thank you very much for bringing all these things up because, you know, 30 years, you do forget. I've done a few, <laughs> I've done a few things since then. And uh, so, it, it, you know, the, the whole idea, I have to say, of, of an artwork like this is the meaning is established together. It, it's not... It's not something the artist just gives out and then you take it in. It's it's a dialogue, and so the meaning is created in that in that way. Um, and because, in fact, the nature of making making art is subjective. You're not you're not actually. It's an aesthetic activity. It's not a cognitive activity of such. The, the actual meaning of uh, uh, of, an art, of our artworks, of an artwork, 
has established, often the audience, the spectator, will tell the artist what's happening. And it, the, the meaning, the, the significance evolves. And I, I think we can see that in very practical ways because we're still influenced by works that were, were, paid, were created 500 years ago. You know, we're not, we, we may no longer be, you know, all observant um, Christians, but we're still able to engage with works that are created within that tradition. We invest them with, with meanings, with, with new meaning, with different meaning. So, in, you know, every generation is able to experience and add to a, um, or should have the opportunity to a add to an artwork and to form its evolving, its evolving meaning. And I, I think that's one of the differences between producing an artwork and a work of history, if you like, you know, where you're, you know, you're, you're, you're noting something down to be agreed with or not. But, but the artwork, yeah, the artwork has that duality. It's something that you put forward, but it's also something that you, that, that, that you get back from it different, in different ways at different times. I was just going to say that the, the leg, the, the shot leg, do you really imagine it's a decoy when no one found was in the cage? Somebody stopped on the tram to lure the police away yes. and, and was shot uh, in the leg, if I recall. That's right. Um, so, I'm sorry, I didn't catch the face that you know in the hand, the angel, or the... Or the <laughs> I didn't take that big a liberty. <laughs> that might have been pushing it a bit too far. Just, uh, just next uh, to, to the... In the middle. In the middle. Yeah. Yeah. Which one? Yeah. Yes, well, it's, it's, as, as somebody said, we've got the problem... Oh, I see, the problem with the... Instructions I support this younger person over here because I think the historical group should try and get that huge device <laughs> removed from something. Thank you. I, I'm, I'm struck by your comment about the calligraphy, and uh, at the time, you know, there, there wouldn't have been a large number of Chinese people, but a lot of Italians and Greeks and so on. It, it seems to be a, a brave decision on your part. To actually let someone graffiti alone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, can you talk a bit about the, the, the thinking? Sure, yeah. yeah. Well, a couple of things really. One, um, I, I was, I, I got interested in mural painting as a collaborative art form. So it's different to e e easel painting in the sense that it, it, I, I did this pretty much by, by myself. I mean, there were some other additions to it. But most of the works that I've done in, in my life um, have been works with others. So there might be half a dozen others in some cases and so on. So the, the, the nature of mural painting is collaborative. So that, that was a thing that I, um, I, I just had at the core of the thinking about how to do the work. The other, the other thing is that uh, some, um, you know, the migration in the area was changing at that time and it, it was something that I, I was fairly aware of too. I, I first started coming to Brunswick in the early 70s to experience that incredibly unusual bit of cuisine, the souflaki, which I used to have at the Penguin Cafe. <laughs> I noticed the slime is still there and also uh, the very exotic place that I used to go to, the retreat, which was a Greek nightclub uh, in the early 70s. And really, really excellent food and very, very, um, you know, very interesting sort of place. And there were a number of Greek nightclubs, I'm sure people would know that in Brunswick, including one above, um, one above uh, the um, Jello, what used to be the Jello bar. You know, so I sort of tried to 
make some, I tried to make some references, but I don't, didn't want to make them too obvious, if you, you know what I mean. <laughs> so if it does take away from it a bit. You know, they always say that art, artworks are about sort of unlocking, un, unlocking doors, not bashing down open ones. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's just trying to figure out ways of sort of looking at some, some of those sort of changing questions and the dif differing migrations part of it. And, and I knew a number of Chinese artists as well, like their work and was learning about it. Of course. The, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yes, and the famous stories of the produce being brought along the city road in sort of a train-like structure. So, yeah, no, you're right. That's, that's and actually, at the time you were painting it, the Chinese were quite common in Bunzu. Um, I always tell a story about my um, son going to the Bunzu Primary School in Albert Street. Um, when he first started, which was 1986, I think, um, Greek was the main language spoken at home by the children. Uh, a few years later, it was Lebanese. By the time he got to grade six, which would have been the early 90s, it was Chinese. Mm -hmm. English is always second. Yeah. Yeah. Um, thank you, thank you. Uh, it's not a style of work that I'm familiar with. And it's, it, listen to you last year, gaining some insight into it. But I, I, I guess what, and it's par partially to do with the lighting and the pictures that I see, but what jumps out at me and left me totally confused. It's a mirror. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and and, uh, and my, my eye then goes to the rope and tell that uh, explanation. And then, because I spent many years in Tasmania, I, I think of Abel Tasman as a Dutchman uh, on the side. But, uh, yeah, the, the, the mirror leaves me. <laughs> Good. <laughs> well, yes, I, I, I guess that's a part of that whole questioning process. You know that the mirror is there. You know that um, that uh, it, it, the, the work has to have some elements of that it, it, that in it. it. It's you did remind me of something though, <laughs> when you were talking about that, and that was that at the stage when I was doing this, I was quite influenced by uh, 1930s illustrations. And of course, they were a vision of history for a time. And, you know, at the time, they were presented as being a representation, but of course, they were a representation in a context. And so I, I was looking at those sorts of pictures, and I had a great personal stock of them, and they, um, uh, they really helped me a lot. And, I had them because my father was the headmaster of a primary school. Uh, well, quite a few actually, but he ended, he ended his career at Glenroy. And um, he began his career in, um, in the early 1920s. Uh, and, uh, and from that period, he collected a huge amount of visual imagery and, and um, and when, when my, my parents died, I had this stock of imagery and it was very, very interesting to me in the context of the library. And so I was able to sort of work with some of the forms of representation that I found in that collection of imagery. I didn't in, in any way imagine that Glen Roy where my dad was the principal of the primary school, would suddenly be a part of the same municipality. <laughs> but um, but uh, the mural was in. But there's a certain significance to it. I, 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 did, I, I did a whole series of works based around that, you know, that material that I collected, that li the teaching aids and library materials that he built up and had saved from from the 1920s right through until he retired in 1968. So, you know, all that time. And I still have the collection. Any thoughts around what 
seem to be a bit contrary? Well, it, it's, it, it's, a, it's a reference to historical memory and the way that it, it's put forward. And, to the, and also it's a reference to the way that stories are conveyed, that, that, um, that, that are not always through, um, uh, through literary conventions, but are through others, other means. I'm going to ask you a couple of practical questions. Sure. How long did it take you to do, and how do you actually work? I mean, you have a, a small drawing of this, or do you experiment on the wall, if I can put it that way? Yeah. Um, and and what, what is it? What is the paper you use? What did I use? Um, yeah, well, the, I, when I started painting murals, and I started in the 70s. Uh, I think the first big project I did was in 1974. And I, I'd, I'd studied mural painting in Mexico after I finished art school. Um, you know, the Mexican muralists, of course, were world famous. And so I, I, um, I went to Mexico, I studied mural painting there, and then from Mexico I went to the United States. And uh, there was a thing starting to develop there around community-based mural painting and so I, I worked in Chicago for a little while and when I got back to Australia I was interested in sort of in 75 interested in um, trying to develop that sort of community based sort of art practice that was you know the potential was there and that meant I, I didn't have a lot of experience so I used to plan everything in huge detail when I started and probably the work that I did at Melbourne Central was the most planned work anyone had ever done in human history, I reckon. The plan, you know, we just did drawings at work sites around Melbourne. Uh, I made, I don't know how many hundred drawings and other artists who worked with me as well. We made an immense number of things. That, most of them are collected in the um, archives of Melbourne Uni now. But I, I just, planned everything down to the last inch and drew it by hand through a grid. So I'd put up a grid and then with a, a section of the project drawing, you know, carefully draw it all through. With this one, uh, I'd uh, changed the method and I discovered the overhead projector, the wonders of the overhead projector. So I, I didn't plan it in detail. I had a general idea of what I was doing and, uh, um, and a collection of images that I, I wanted to use and I put them onto acetate and uh, I got a cherry picker and, <laughs> and, I, and just pretty much where you are now I had the uh, overhead projector set up and I put the image onto the projector and shoot it up onto the wall and I would then draw it in with text colour. And that was the way I drew it up. And, um, and it meant that I, I adjusted it all the time. So if I thought something was looking a bit large, a bit small, I could sort of move it around. So uh, it was more spontaneous than, um, uh, than, than the works that I'd previously done. You know, the work, similarly, the work I did down at Toronto Youth Training Center, which is now gone, um, that, that was huge. That was 14 separate walls and the whole length of the field. It, it was a really massive, massive work. But every single piece of it, you know, we, we planned out, put up the grid, worked through, first with charcoal, and then, you know, and then after that with a waterproof pen, and then over a period of time, you know, painted it. But this one was done in that more spontaneous sort of way. Um, and I could move the cherry picker around and it wouldn't have struck the, the, um, the overhead projector. Then, once that was done, uh, I built a scaffold, and, uh, which I was much more used to. And I, I loved working with scaffolding. Um, uh, later on, I actually developed a project in China with a group of, of, um, uh, of uh, builders who were, I, were what's called an itinerant work brigade. They, 
they would move around the country building things. And, and uh, I, I had this very large project, well, seven stories high, and, um, and to build a scaffold, there was this, uh, um, the um, group that I was working with commissioned the, this group of workers, and they were brilliant. Because I, I had an idea of what a safe scaffolding should be like. And I was used to working outside of Australia, so I would always take a slide of a safe scaffold with me. <laughs> and so then when, you know, when I was describing the sort of, you know, what I'd like for my mural, I would project it up and sort of handrail, you know, ladder, you know. <laughs> and, um, you know, so anyway, the, these, um, the man who was in charge of this group, he was the most resourceful person. And just with uh, bamboo, old metal tubes, a mixture of uh, planks that were bits of bamboo brought together. Um, some were metal planks which had been really bashed around and they just straightened them out with, with hammers. They built this brilliant scaffold, seven story scaffold, which was as safe as anything. And actually the, 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 the man in charge of the job said, I put more into this than most apartment buildings. <laughs> but uh, with the, the scaffold here, we um, were able to construct it. And uh, I just trying to remember how long I was on the site, because the building was all going on at the same time. So there were quite a few um, people working on, on the um, town hall development. Uh, I think I was here, and I had to come in at a certain stage. You know, that, that was the thing, so that, you, you know, when one job is being done, you, you can't get in the way of that, you've got to do it between various things. And I think I was probably on site for about, I think about a month, if I remember rightly, about a month, um, you know, for the painting, maybe a bit more in terms of the, you know, putting on the drawing. And it's... Um, it is the paint. Uh, there are a couple of different paints that I've sort of used over the years, and um, one is um, is, a, is a German paint called Pine that been used in Europe for a long, long time. And uh, I, I did start to I didn't think I would use that, but then in the end I, I ended up using a synthetic polymer paint, which. Um, was available at the time and very easy to work with, so that, that's what I used. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of training. Yes. The hands of people. Yes. You, know, you can see the rest of them as long as their hands. Um, but there's all those insects, those hands. Yeah. Hand yeah. It, it looked just about how things. I've always been interested in the human hand. You know, the idea of, you know, you know, the brain really is a product of the hand, in a sense. So, you know, it's sort of what we do, we change ourselves through what we do, the sort of transformation of nature, that, that's our distinctive, you know, species character. So, yeah, I've tried to sort of always tried to work with that notion of the, of the human hand. And there's another thing. Um Brunswick's not that close to the sea. <laughs> no, it's not. So, so, so there's, there's, there's yeah. an anchor, there there's is. a seashell, there's a man who's feeding the water, yep. um, and, and, and the backdrop sort of sends watery over, and that's that's that, that, that dry drop. Right. Now, so the, the did you, perhaps this is a reference to the to the Brunswick baths. No, no, it's <laughs> not. It's not. It was very controversial at the time. The baths. Um, no, no. It's 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 about that sort of. Um, idea of mobility and um, you know the sort of variations of of, um, of um, you know how we how we ended up here. It's had to do with migration coming yeah. from boats. Aboriginal artists that they you know, have done um, 
I, I steered away from that because we're commissioning Karen. You know, I, I, I think the, the sort of, I think the principle is that if, if you're doing that, you must work with, that it would have to be an, an Indigenous artist. So, um, so what, at that stage, that, I think this was a part of the, the whole notion that, um, that there would be works by uh, a, a First Nation artist as a part of the, you know, the suite of works that this was one part of. I, I, I focused on the sort of migration aspect more. Yeah. But coming again... But the, hey, of course it's the universal the quality, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, having come into the library and pondered many times what this is all about, that was my, my okay. immediate um, uh, right. reference. Yes. And also you can see the hands in that, that corner behind that um, man with the green pipes oh, yes. <laughs> and a sort of a cage thing yes. and a cage like yes. behind there so it's like you know they're, they're wiping them out and all these um, European right. characters are taking over yeah. so that, that's what it was well, I think that's a part of this evolution of meaning <laughs> isn't it that's right the art <laughs> yeah. you know, uh, interpreted and also the, the mirror because I'm reading the article <laughs> <laughs> can't remember what I said about that though yeah, well, it was looking into, looking back in, to look back into the history of the, of the area, but I can see it both places, the history of, of the land and the space, um, also looking into the future, because the, the what is it, the terrible angle holding mm -hmm. on this side is much more clearer, whereas the other one on the other side is sort of a little bit lifted over, and I can see the paint running down and that sort of abstract cup of art to me, and you know, I can see it coming down, sort of dripping down, right down towards the stage floor. To me, that is, oh, what kind of graffiti art is They're going to take a blow Well, that, that's what it is. If you go down to the road, and all you see is a lot of Actually, I was sad that there's a, a mural just uh, where. Um, um, Opposite the mechanics of um, the school. What's the school? You know, that's just in Sydney Road, opposite the mechanics. No, no, not the community school, um, the Catholic school. St. Ambrose. St. Ambrose. Um, there's a mural on the wall, sort of facing away, that was painted by an Italian artist who visited here, um, who who visited here, she used to go to lots of different countries painting works around Italian migration. Um, Paola de Monica, I can't remember her name, but I was, um, uh, uh, Paola. And she had a beautiful way of working, actually, and very much from the region that she came from in northern Italy. And I was very sorry to see that it had been uh, pretty pretty um, seriously graffiti the other day. Uh, it's probably not too late to do something about it. I, I did mention it to the council, but I haven't seen anything yet. It's, well, it, I think it's significant because it, you know, it is an artist who's sort of made quite a contribution and whose, whose work was all about migration and travelled around dealing with that. How, how did you feel when your Tirana work was well, I was used to, you know, part of the tradition that I, I came from, so he was, that the work was only going to be there for a while. And, I mean, I don't feel that all the time, <laughs> but like I, I was uh, saying before, in Mexico, when I was studying there, the notion was for a sort of a, a works that would be in existence for many, 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 many years, and of course, their reference was back to the pre-Hispanic monumental traditions that were a big part of the culture. Later, when I sort of worked in in the U.S., of course, you know, the home of late capitalism, um, there was a sort of sense that things were very impermanent. And the, the art that was being created in the, the 
community-based art was being created in those, in those places where I was working. They were just meant to be there for a, for a while. And that was a part of the ideology, if you like, that it wasn't going to last, that it was just to do with that moment. And so uh, I, uh, I, I knew that there was a, probably a, a time limit on that work. You know, I didn't have that, that sense at the time. So some, some works I, I've thought of as being more permanent. Um, as Prince Charles might say, whatever that means. <laughs> uh, <laughs> King Charles. Um, but, um, um, uh, but yes, the Toronto one I, I saw differently. I, I produced a work out of Newport. I don't know if anyone's familiar with that. But at the Newport railway station, it's a, it's a concrete relief around sort of deindustrialization. And uh, I did that a few years after this. It couldn't be more different um, <laughs> than this one. Uh, but I, I, my plans for that, and I, I, it was a collaboration with Enver Kandal, who's a Turkish artist who'd come to Australia. Um, my plans for that was that it would become a ruin, that it was a sort of contemporary ruin. And it has lived up to <laughs> It's lived up to that. But, uh, you know, they actually did a festival around it not long ago, an industrial art festival, which is rather good, because you've got the substation there and other things. Yes, hmm. we could talk about this mural all night. Time to end? Okay. Thank you so much. I learned so much about this mural that I, I didn't know before. And, um, and the shell, I've always wondered about the golden shell. Oh, I okay. yeah. yeah. Well, thank you very much for all coming along tonight to hear Jeff talk about the mural and um, just some information that you can take away about the mural. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to. Um, and thank you very much for coming. And if you like this event and you want to come along to more events, you can subscribe to our e newsletter. Um, you, you'll see more events coming up or in the new year. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for helping me understand what the mural is about. <laughs> yeah, I just want a commercial here for that uh, newly um, published paper, uh, newspaper, the front of the court. Which, um, the publisher, editor, and journalist, Mark Phillips, is here. Yeah. Um, it's not going to be delivered door to door, um, but there'll be uh, copies available. There are quite a few out in the foyer here, and there are some of the town hall foyer, um, various cafes and places up and down Sydney Road. So I urge you all to grab a copy. And there is something about the Turnham Gallery. So nothing in East or West Brunswick? Oh, she's great. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, she's uh, singing. Oh,
Yeah, I'm not next to her. But, well, maybe she's next to her, I'm not sure. But yeah, she's singing. Yeah, yeah. For the Rogues, the Brunswick Rogues. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you very much. I can say one. I will say I've got a photograph, and I'm certainly interested, but it's totally different. Um, Besides, I was able to travel very wide around the world in 2012 as a member of the International Council of Museums all across North America. And in Glasgow, there is a week in North America, and I moved to the Empire and the if you're more interested, right. because the, 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 the size is just totally different. Oh, wow. as the oh I think it's that's very kind of Well, thank you. Thank you. All right. Okay. Do you like yeah, all right. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. That's a good question. <laughs> no, you know, you know, you know, I'm, I'm a writer. Oh, I feel like yeah. making a speech in front of this. Do you even love it? We gathered here today. How are you going anyway? Oh, I'm happy. Yeah, it's good. Oh, I mean, what a be happy, be healthy. All my friends are dropping dead or getting oh, cancer or getting sick and it, it's, it just slows your mind down. But uh, it's important to live the uh, days okay. that we have. That is true. Right. Yeah. That is true. Yeah. Okay. There's always two. It's, yeah, it's sort of it's even more true now. Yeah, I think that when you when you start to go, it's a bit of a wake up. <laughs> See you. Thank you so much, Jess. Thank you.